it was found frozen by your crew. Now it's gone and copied you. Here's your look at the new NECA toys, The Thing, Ultimate McCready, Outpost 31. In the winter of 1982, a 12-man research team in the remote Antarctic Research Station discovered an alien buried in the snow for over 100,000 years. Once unfrozen, the form-changing alien wreaks havoc, creates terror, and becomes one of them. Before we get down to the review of the thing's McCready, obviously the first thing we're going to want to do is figure out how tall is the figure. And the best way for me to do it, at least, is to bring in my ever-reliable, trusty tape measure, which as far as I know is still the same tape measure I've been using this whole time, and I don't think the alien has taken the form of it. I really hope right now it doesn't open its mouth and snap off my fingers. Let's, let's do this rather quickly. We're going to move across right where his head, I believe, is, and we're going to move it just to about there. According to the readout, you're looking at the things McCready standing 8.2 inches in height. Don't bite me, don't bite me. Switching that over to centimeters, then you're looking at the figure standing 21 centimeters exactly. Well, so far the tape measure hasn't turned and became some sort of mutated monster, so I'm going to assume it's still the same tape measure. I'm going to keep my eye on it though, my good eye on it. As we do that, I'd certainly like to thank as well the folks over at NECA Toys that provide the sample of the Thing McCready that we could have a look at in this review, which is available right now in retail stores and online. Checking out the various accessories, and this guy actually gets packed a lot. Swappable heads, different swappable hands, and a bunch of different accessories that we'll have a look at right now. Still keeping my eye on that tape measure. Starting first, he comes included with the bottle that he has in the movie. Now, this does have the label applied to it, but I'd be confident to tell you that at least it seems like the label isn't peeling off. Sometimes when we do get stickers applied to accessories this small, sometimes the, the labels do peel off. But this one actually is nice and applied. Good strong glue that they've used. You'll see as well that the top of the cap is missing, or the cap on the top of the bottle is missing. And that's because uh, he has already opened it. Started pulling him, pouring himself off a glass, which so happens to be the other accessory that he comes included with a little tiny drinking glass. Not only is there liquid from the bottle in there, but there's also some settled ice cubes. Very cool, the fact that they included that. Oh, very cool, I see what I did there. Now these can be held in his hands. We'll go back to those in a second because he does come with some swappable hands. But let's have a look at some of the other things he comes included with. Like, there's a lot to cover. He comes with a little tiny lantern, which does have a functioning moving handle. Just be careful that this doesn't break on you. Detail for such a small piece is nicely done, even like the little flint on the inside. Is that the flint in the inside of the lantern has also been painted in silver? Probably, I would imagine, the lantern is going to be what I'm going to display the figure with. But like I said, there is still a lot to really cover off. It comes included with his shotgun. I say this so frequently, I know, but... I like when they do dry brush some additional coloring over it. It adds some depth and it does it makes it look less like molded plastic. That's what it looks like on the other side as well. And again, that can go into his hand. Promises, promises, all these things that can fit into his hand. Let's talk about something that go on his hat on his head. He has his hat. The hat, while taking out of the packaging, I just assumed it to be material, but it is very soft plastic. You can see the flaps on the front. He wears his hat like this. Or is it like this. He wears his hat at least with a flap on the front. And then down below that, he actually has a real fabric strap. So you can use that either with the other head, the other head sculpts that we're going to be looking at, or if you also wanted to drape this over his head, like he does have in the movie and just sort of do your best to get it tucked underneath the collar like this, you can have the figure displayed like this as well. Well, I suppose we're also talking about this defaulted head sculpt. Let's just remove the hat for the time being. He comes in clue with some goggles. The goggles, they have given you enough clearance, I, I feel, to stretch this across his head. Though, again, you may want to maybe heat the plastic up a little bit because, well, you, you're going to have to really stretch that. The other workaround you can do, too, is pop the head off, put the decapitated body now down on the base there, on the backdrop, and then you can kind of do your best to get the goggles up underneath his hair. 
like the hair separates just enough that it seems like you can almost tuck that underneath the hair on either side. Get it on this side as well. Get it just underneath that. And then sort of just move it, navigate this far enough up that you can then get the goggles on that. I would probably approach it the second route, the one that we just talked about, because it seems like it would be the less likely to break on you. And you can display the figure like that. Similar, we actually did that also with the Doc Brown from Back to the Future, where it was so much easier, I found, to get it underneath. Again, you can kind of just get it like that. And then once that's in place, just put it back onto the ball peg. And then from there, you're just going to have to just adjust it a little bit. Again, I probably will go this route. I feel like it's just safer and less likely to break the straps, but it will involve you having to maybe even get like tweezers or something and just kind of tuck the strap underneath the hair so at least the goggles are far enough up onto his face like that. The figure also includes, after all that was said and done, let's go ahead and remove the goggles. He also comes with glasses, but I feel like the glasses are better suited for his alternate head sculpts, which I guess we can talk about right now. He comes included with two hooded variations of his head. One looks like more frostbitten than the other, and obviously the expressions are different from one another as well. But this works quite well if you want to have him displayed with the hat on his head. Now to do this, what we're going to do, we're going to go back to this head, don't worry. We're going to take this existing head sculpt off. And let's go with, maybe let's go with this one right here. Just pop it into place. And what it actually does nicely is it, it continues the trend of the hoodie that he's got underneath. Just providing, of course, you get enough of the ball joint attached in place. There we go. Here's the other one, just in case you wanted to see it. We'll talk about his likeness in a second, but for the time being, we're going to go ahead and get the glasses because that's the other thing he comes included with. The glasses just fit over top of his eyes. That's normally where glasses go. And then you can actually take the sides of the glasses and tuck them in between where the hood is and his face. And again, you just tuck them carefully, carefully, because you don't want to break these. Just tuck them inside the flap. This is something, of course, I would spend a little bit more time doing carefully off camera, but just for the time being, we'll get that. There we go. Get the goggles, get the glasses, the glasses tucked inside between the hood and the face. And then once that's in place, then you can go ahead and take the hat, get the strap, try not to drop the hat in the process. There's the hat. There's the hat right there. Get the hat. Don't almost did it a second time. Get the hat and just bring the strap of the hat forward. And then just apply a little bit of pressure to get that down on top of the hood. And then you'll just want to fix things up after the fact. And that's what he looks like when he's got the hat, the goggles, and the head sculpts at least have the hooded portion on there. For me personally, when it comes to displaying McCready, I think I'd be more inclined just to kind of strip off everything I just finished doing and go back with the stock head sculpt, which is this one right here. So why don't we go ahead and do that? Take the hat off. So happens, I don't even think the head was fully in, in place anyways. We're going to go ahead and remove the glasses. And I guess really also, while we've got the heads in place, I'm going to grab the other head sculpt. See if I can hold all three of them. And we're going to grab the stock head sculpt too, so you can see the difference between the three. It would be safe to imagine that these are all the same character, the same face. Though, of course, the way that they've done them is slightly different from one another. Personally speaking, I'm going to put these ones down for the second. I feel like maybe this is the strongest head sculpt of the three, which is somewhat funny because this one is the one that doesn't have the hair. If I compare it to this one, again, this one's not bad at all, but I don't feel it's as much bearing the likeness of Kurt Russell. I feel like this is the better of the two. And then to compare it with the stock head sculpt, some have said it doesn't bear enough of a resemblance to McCready or, again, actor Kurt Russell from the film. I may tend to agree with you. There is something off, and I've been trying to pinpoint what exactly it is. And whether you use this head sculpt or whether you use this head sculpt, I feel like the issue is the eyes. The eyes, while looking like Kurt Russell, I feel maybe are a little too high. If I had brought them down just a little bit, say another eye down, another space of an eye down, I feel like that may have done it. Because if you're looking at the shadowing of where the eyes are just underneath it, 
If you would imagine that's where Kurt Russell's eyes would actually have settled, I feel like that may have given you a better looking likeness. With that being said, though, it's a shame, really, that you can't remove this headpiece and swap it out with the hair. I mean, it just wouldn't be, it's not, impo it's pos impossible, really. It's impossible to be able to do that. So we'll go ahead and just put back the head sculpt back onto him. This is probably going to be the way I'm going to display the figure. You know, surprisingly, of all the other accessories he comes including, the only other things he comes with is another swappable hand, which is just basically like a gloved hand. And he comes with a couple of just regular ungloved hands. Now, these, these ones are trigger fingers, and then he basically has like one for holding the bottle. You can take the bottle, take the neck of the bottle, and slide it up in between his hands, and he can hold the bottle like that. And then, by the way, if you want to change out those hands, one thing that's interesting and clever the way that they've done this is you've removed the hands like that. You can also then go in and remove the top part of the glove. And then from there, find the hands that you want to go with. Let's go with the these hands. We'll do the exact same thing on the other side. A quick little tutorial. Remove that. I'm going to go ahead and remove this as well. This one is a little more stuck. There we go. And then we can replace it with the hand right now, currently holding the bottle. Just get that in place right now. Though I wouldn't necessarily consider McCready an alcoholic, I probably would still likely display him, I think, with the bottle in his hand and maybe the glass in his hand. And then that pretty much like covers off all the other accessories that the figure comes included with. And yet, surprisingly, the one thing I would have thought the figure could have been packed with, the little Petri dish, is nowhere to be found unless it just vanished, or unless it wasn't ever a Petri dish to start off with. Perhaps that may mean that down the road, NECA Toys may re-release re like a version 2 McCready, and I'm sure that second McCready, if we do ever get one, probably will come included with that Petri dish. Because again, it's kind of strange that the figure never had one in the first place. So sticking with the stock head sculpt for the time being, this is probably going to be the head sculpt I'm going to settle with anyways when it comes to displaying the figure because this reads the most like Kurt Russell to me. Yes, admittingly, there is still something off on the face. And prior to shooting this review, I tried to go back and look at stills from the movie to gauge whereabouts does it come up a little bit short. I feel like it's maybe the shape of his eyes. The length or width of his eyes, not to mention the fact that the eyes seem a little too narrow, if they had increased the size of his eyes and maybe moved them slightly down just a little bit, I feel like that may be the thing that's off-putting about the head sculpt. The paint is also something where it, it, I feel like it's a little too soft. It's a little too, not chalky, but it has too soft of a feature to it. Where when you compare it, of course, to the movie, I think also his skin tone is a little bit darker in the film also. The beard, to its credit, is sculpted nicely. Maybe there could have been an opportunity that they could have put some of these lighter strands that he has in his hair also down in the beard too. Because the beard is very neutrally painted, using pretty much all the same dark brown across all of it. Is it a perfect likeness to Kurt Russell? No. But the fact that we are actually getting ourselves a McCready from The Thing with hoping that we're going to be getting even more Thing figures from NECA Toys down the road, I'm just thrilled for the fact that we finally have ourselves a McCready. I may even be inclined to pick up another one of these so I can then make use of the other head sculpts. Because again, like I probably will settle on this one as the stock way of displaying the figure. But the fact that they do include all these other features available and also certainly to be displaying the figure with the hat on, I'm probably going to, yeah, maybe get another one of these down the road. For the rest of the features on the figure, of course, he does have his bomber jacket on here. This seems softer to the touch when I'm applying a little bit of pressure to it. So they likely have applied this over top of the body underneath. Of course, then it comes to the arms. The arms are more of a solid plastic, but there's definitely a little bit more, a little bit more give to the jacket itself. I do like the fact that there's a sheen to it. So it does look, mimic the material that he would have had in the movie, right down to the fact that it's got like little cracks little creases that would have naturally developed on a jacket like that. So the jacket looks good. I don't have any real problems with the jacket. And then, of course, when we get down to the pants, the pants have, like in the movie, little zippers there on the sides of the pockets, the zipper running down the front, and zippers down the sides of his legs as well. And then, of course, they're tucked into higher-cut boots with laces sculpted in there. 
The laces are the same color as the rest of the boot. Perhaps there may have been an opportunity that they could have colored it differently so that the laces stood out a little bit. But I think from like, from like pretty much like the neck down, there isn't really anything I would have changed to the figure. There are a few little tweaks, tweaks maybe that I would have done differently to the face. But again, even as like, I'm not a figure sculptor myself. So really being able to kind of focus in on what exactly is missing or what exactly is the fault of this figure not quite looking like the character. I, I only feel like it's the eyes. And maybe if the eyes were a little bit different, like if I put my thumb across the top, I feel like that's enough looking like McCready. And when you're looking at the eyes, you know, even like the eyes, even doing like this and putting my thumb over top of his nose, I know that probably would suffocate him. But like that looks like Kurt Russell. Maybe it's just the combination of the two together. It could very well just simply be the paint as well. It's close. It's very close, but something seems slightly off about it. For McCready's articulation, though, his head rotates all the way around. One good thing going for him, well, sometimes, yes, while you are moving the head, the head does pop off the ball joint, but at least the, the collar piece of his jacket seems soft enough that when you are rotating the head, the collar does move down a little bit and doesn't get in the way of things. But the head does move down, it does move up, and you can also rock it back and forth as well. For his shoulders, well, you can bring them out, but you can't bring them out fully at 90 degrees. To the point where it says, stop, don't go any further, got me to about 45 or 50 degrees on the bend. Anything after that, it seems like it's really hitting some resistance, so I probably wouldn't push it any further past that point. The arms, of course, rotate all the way around. Little tight and squeaks a bit when it's doing that, simply just because of the type of the material that's rubbing up against. He does have a swivel at the forearm. You can bend at the elbow, and you can, of course, rotate McCready's hands all the way around, whatever hands you decide to display him with. Upper torso is on a ball joint. While you do move the, the, the torso joint, you can kind of see like the inner workings of the body underneath and realize that the obviously the hooded part of his shirt underneath doesn't go all the way down to the bottom that yes, there are points where when you are moving the figure, if you move it up excessively like this, if he wants to be in a limbo contest, then yes, you're going to be noticing the flesh-colored plastic underneath all that. But when you're looking at it straight on like this, and providing you're not doing something silly like that, you shouldn't be able to notice it. Legs split out. You can also bring the legs forward and back. He has a swivel where that attaches to the ball joint. He has a single hinge on the knee, which also allows the lower leg to rotate back and forth. And when it comes to his feet, while well, this part doesn't have any additional articulation, his feet most definitely can move back and forth, and you can also ankle pivot them as well. And again, just getting them all straightened up and put him back on display. I believe somebody on Twitter had reached out and made just a generalized comment to NECA Toys if they are planning to expand out the Thing franchise from just aside from just McCready that we're getting here. And I think even Randy himself had indicated that there are plans to be doing some more Thing figures. I certainly hope that it's not just going to start and stop with McCready. Thing is one of my all-time favorite sci-fi horror films. And the idea that we are hopefully going to be getting some Thing related characters from the movie has me quite excited and I can finally have them then on display along with McCready that we've already gotten from NECA. Is the Thing's McCready a good enough likeness? It's pretty close. In fact, seeing this now physically in hand, I feel like online images and even the package artwork that you're seeing here and final looks, I don't think it does proper enough justice to what McCready looks like until you actually get him in hand. It's a close enough resemblance to Kurt Russell. Admittingly, there is something off on the face, and it could really even just be chalked up to the way it was painted. The head sculpt, when we saw early prototypes, looked enough like Kurt Russell that maybe somewhere along the lines, the way it was painted, throws off maybe some of those features just a little bit. But for me, the very idea that we're finally getting ourselves a thing McCready, I'm just happy by that. I mean, we have only, the only other Kurt Russells that we have gotten before generally have been from like Escape from LA. So the fact that we are finally getting ourselves a fully articulated Kurt Russell, even from one of my favorite things that Kurt Russell has been in, The Thing, I'm just happy the fact that we're finally getting ourselves a McCready and different ways that you can display the figure as well, as you can see here on the back of the packaging. He does have, of course, the options of the hooded head sculpt, which of course you can have him wearing the hat and wearing the glasses, or you can just have him stock and defaulted with the way he's looking at right now. And that's probably going to be a way I'm going to display him, maybe just swapping out for the bottle with the lantern, and that might be the way I'm going to have him permanently on my shelf. I'm pretty sure there's some mileage here that they can get out of this existing mold. 
I mean, really, even as a con exclusive, you want to think convention exclusive. How about a frostbitten McCready? There you go. I mean, they could easily just use the same mold as what they've got right now, frost it up a little bit, and it could look like McCready from the end of the movie. Uh, there is definitely an option available for what they can do with the mold. And I got to think at some point that they're probably going to do a version to McCready because I do ask the question of all the accessories he comes packaged with, why wouldn't he have come with the very famous Petri dish? You know, when I think of the thing that generally the scene that I'm thinking of the most is the Petri dish where they're testing everybody's blood. And yet, funny enough, he doesn't come included with it. Maybe it was just too small of an accessory. But really, he does come with the drinking glass. So maybe at some point, we are going to be getting a version 2 McCready, and they could then include the Petri dish, which I really feel, again, was overlooked with this release. What do you guys think of NECA's The Thing McCready Ultimate Figure? Let me know down below in the comments section whether you've picked the figure up for yourself or just based on this review. Do you think it's a close enough likeness to McCready from the movie? Let me know down below in the comments section. We can shoot the breeze, talk over a brisk iced tea. In the meantime, I'd like to thank the folks over at NECA Toys that provide the sample of McCready that we could have a look at in this review. If you guys are new to this channel, enjoying all the content you're seeing, be sure to do one thing. No, 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 you don't have to donate your blood. We, we can do that later on after we've get, got to know one another. But make sure you hit that subscribe button down below that you're turning on the bell notification and that you're keeping your peepers peeled to this channel because there will, in fact, be more NECA reviews lined up and coming your way. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time.